What's happening YouTube, it's your boy Tech Tricks. back in another video and today we're gonna edit with the MacBook Pro M1. Here we go. First things first, make sure to hit that subscribe button below, hit the notification bell so you can notify the next videos to come. Make sure to hit the like button so we can beat that YouTube algorithm and make sure to check out my merch below at 1130.ca. So let's go ahead and do this. Here we go. Today we're looking at the MacBook M1 and we're gonna edit using the Final Cut Pro. I haven't been using the Final Cut Pro uh, to be honest with you, I've abandoned Macs for a long time now, for about a couple of years. I've been using my iPad Pro 2018 since then to edit most of my videos on YouTube. Every video that you see from now on will be edited from the MacBook Air. Now I'm going to start to use Final Cut Pro. It's going to be a bit of a rough, rough uh, start again but that's okay. I think I can remember my uh, shortcuts once again, once I start doing it more and more. But yeah, we're gonna test it out and see how well this uh, MacBook Air, which by the way, the last MacBook Airs, the past MacBook Airs cannot edit. So this is a big leap for sure, that the MacBook Air is now usable to edit videos, to render, and let's see how well it does actually. So here we go. All right, let's do this. So uh, I have a video here, I'm gonna show you guys. And basically, as you can see here, Final Cut Pro, everything is all good to go. And uh, it's pretty basic editing, like I said. As you can see here, we're gonna try to scrub through this thing right here. Oh yeah, super exciting stuff. See that? And when you scrub, there's no lag or anything like that, like I said. I don't have a whole lot, it's not overly vi busy. Like this is, I put a lot on this. Right here, com camera a lot. So it is a little bit edited, but not too, nothing too crazy. I have put a keyer on that one, so that you can, for those of you who want to put, you know, starting a YouTube channel, but you want to put your your logo up there, so you could see there, we're gonna scrub that for you right there. See that? Normally that would that would have the green on the background, but because you put the keyer, then uh, it becomes a transparent background, kind of like green screen, right? Same with this guy right here. I have the green screen up there, right there. And then you'll see the subscribe button right there. There you go. So yeah, you won't be able to see the green on the back. So that's pretty good. Um, same with that guy right there. These footages are 4K 60p. As you could see up here, 4K 60p. I use 8-bit on the Lumix Panasonic G9. The top footage right here is from Osmo Pocket. It's also 4K 60p, as you can see there. Crisp and uh, very crisp as well right here. So beautiful. Like I said, no lag on the on the scrubbing right there. You can even add more stuff here. But imagine you're you're editing with 4K 60p, 4K 60p up there. You can add even more and you could see there, I'm just going through it like no problem at all. Right now I'm starting to learn how to use uh, motion and compressor for Final Cut Pro so that uh, combine it together so you can have 3D effects. Kind of like After Effects if you're a uh, Adobe fan out there, right? Uh, it's just the Apple version, that's all. But yeah, it's um, this is just basic editing that I do for my YouTube channel and basically uh, I have I didn't have any problems when I was doing this. There are a couple of times, to be honest with you, that it stopped clicking. But I think during those times, the MacBook Air was still starting up because I had a bunch of apps that are installing at the time. And also, because I restored it from from backup, right? When you When you buy a new product, you restore from backup. And all your fire, all, all your files will uh, be downloaded from the iCloud. So that was what's happening. So when when that was during that time, I was trying to edit this video, and there were times where it wouldn't play back anymore. Uh, it would lag a little bit. Like 
the, like I said, it wouldn't click anymore. There was times as well where I was, I had a footage from, like for example, right here, I had a footage to put into the Final Cut Pro to uh, to be used on, on, our, on my video, but when I was trying to drag it, I couldn't do it. Like for example, like that, like, it wouldn't drag up until there. See, I was able to do it now. See that? Pretty crazy, right? But yeah, I have to get used as well with the trackpad. I'm sure this would be a lot better of a experience if I'm using a uh, magic mouse instead or uh, uh, external mouse. But um, right now I'm just doing my best to just a review it as as a device uh, without using any other uh, external things like no external monitor yet no external uh, keyboard yet no external mouse so i'm just using it as as a device as a macbook air m1 so it's definitely not perfect for those of you who are thinking of buying this uh, just think twice of what programs you're using. I've heard, uh, I've seen online, I don't have Premiere Pro or anything like that. I've seen online that they have problems a little bit with Premiere Pro. I'll link some of the videos below so you guys can check it out. It's still fairly fast, like it's usable, but it's not fully compatible yet. So there's that's something that you need to take in consideration when you're uh, wanting to use Adobe apps. They're not optimized just yet. I think Photoshop is, but I think Premiere Pro is not yet optimized. So just keep that in mind when you're buying the MacBook M1. But yeah, right now there's a lot of apps already optimized for this. I am using mostly Apple uh, apps, as you could see here. I'm going to show you my apps right here. So I have Adobe Lightroom, which is, is okay. Uh, it works well as well, but it's not optimized just yet. I have LumaFusion still that I use, I used to use from my iPad. These are all optimized for this MacBook. Same with Motion, Logic Pro, uh, Compressor, and Main Stage. That's all. That's all. Uh, even the Chrome, uh, Google Chrome, is optimized for the MacBook. Pixelmator Pro you have to buy so that you can it's optimized for the macbook air the pixel meter classic is not uh compatible anymore say uh final cut pro is obviously compatible so every every apple if you are a um, big apple fan anyway right and you are looking for apps that are mainly you uh made by apple then you won't have any problems it's when you are using adobe suite it's it's when it starts to get uh, complicated as you can see here i did a i did put a speed let's see how it well does see that there you go um i put i put 20 times on this so that as you could see it it didn't lag at all usually on my on my last experience with final cut when I'm putting uh, speed ramps or changing the speed or reversing the, the footage, usually it, it lags during the playback. But now, as you can see here, no lag. So that's pretty good. For those of you who are looking for a basic laptop that is fairly cheap and not really, you know, you don't want to spend too much money on it and it still works very well, I think this is good enough for daily use. This is way over... Uh, the top you could just buy the the lowest base level of the macbook air which will cost in canadian at uh, 1300 dollars i believe so right now what we'll do is we're gonna export this right here youtube and facebook here as you can see you can change the settings and we're just gonna leave it at that 4k of course here we have 4K resolution, 59.94, uh, which is 60p, and then um, 14 minutes of uh, video. It says here the file size would be 4.23 gigabytes. So let's go ahead and put up a timer. Let's try to put a stopwatch right here so that you guys can see how long it will take to finish the render. Once to hit save and then hit start. There you go. So now the whole idea here when you're exporting is that 
you want your export to be about the same as your video. So right now our video, a total duration of the video is 14 minutes ish. So as long as the computer, uh, your device or your rig can render uh, lower than that or about the same as that, then it's pretty good. As you could see nothing, no hotness yet. Again, no sound on the uh, MacBook Air. Usually when it's rendering like this, uh, the MacBook Air would just have just blowing fans. And But now, yeah, there's no sound. Another thing I would like to mention as well is the battery life. Here when we started it's about uh, 95%, it only went down 10%, so that's pretty good. That's another key feature for the uh, MacBook Air M1, is that the battery power lasts a long time. And there you go. It was able to finish in 17 minutes and 43. So it's a little bit behind with our duration of the video, which is 14 minutes and two, about three seconds. So that's all right. Uh, during our test as well, during the render, we lost about 4% of battery, 5%-ish of battery. So that's not bad at all as well. So there you have it, guys. Um, it's not quite the one-to-one -one uh, render there, but it is still pretty fast despite of a bit of hiccups here and there This is definitely usable as a laptop. Like I said before the MacBook Air is not usable for editing or it would have a loudest fan and also It would heat up a lot in this case the MacBook Air didn't even heat up at all during the render and during our editing It doesn't even have any fans so it wouldn't blow any fans. It's very quiet and I think that is a very big win for a big leap, of course, for the MacBook Air, especially for the years ahead. As you can see, this is still a first generation product of the M1, but still it, it holds its weight and it's able to do a lot of things that the, the old MacBook Air cannot do. So that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope I was able to help you on your choice on getting one of these. If you are still not satisfied, you can wait till next year. And I think Apple is going to release more MacBook. You can wait it out and wait for the, maybe the next uh, generation so that all the bugs and uh, hiccups are not there anymore. All the, It's all tweaked already. So you can do that. Or even if you wanted to get one today, you I, rec I still recommend this uh, MacBook, uh, especially for those of you who are even wanting to uh, photo edit or video edit. Uh, maybe you are just a regular user or basic uh, computing every single day. You can use this definitely and it'll it'll work well. The best part about this as well is the battery life. Uh, it'll go up to like 18 hours of battery life. As you can see when we are rendering that's uh, a heavy load and we only lost like 4%. Yesterday I edited one video and rendered it and used it. I got this out of the box at 67%. It was able to hold its weight. I didn't have to charge till the end of the day. So that's pretty good. So the next videos, we're going to show you the next uh, the features of the MacBook Air M1. So go ahead and stay tuned. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button as well so we can beat that YouTube algorithm. Hit the notification bell so you'll be notified of the next videos to come. Thank you for watching again. Uh, stay safe out there. Peace.